start today off with prayer. Uh, today's a really, it's a special day, and it's a day that uh, that's about 30 years in the making. There's a lot of emotion in the room. I, I stood in the back, and I heard a lot of people say that they weren't going to be able to make it through this without crying, so uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, Dave beat you all to it. <laughs> he, he cried. <laughs> he was crying basically when there wasn't even a reason to cry yet. So it, it, it was good. And I think it just goes to show all the emotion that, that, we're, that we're here today. But before we talk about that, we wanna, we're gonna pray. Let's just do that. Lord, we recognize that, um, that you are the creator of love, that you are the designer of it, that, that, that marriage is your idea. We recognize that you are the one who orchestrates things like this. And so we just, uh, we just honor your presence within this ceremony. As family and friends are here today to honor Dave and Danielle's love for each other, we just ask God that there would be a, just a strong sense of your presence, that this just wouldn't be um, just uh, two people proclaiming their love, but also proclaiming their love for you. We are thankful that we get to be here and be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, here we are. What, what do you think? If, why don't you take a minute and look out over the crowd, all the people that came to support you and, uh, and believe in you and recognize that, uh, that today is really, really special. You're doing great. I'm, in, I'm so impressed so far. You're doing fine. We'll catch you if you faint, I promise. We will. Uh, today is a, it's the start of a whole new part of your story. And as I already said, 30 years ago today, I think, is, is when you met. Is that right? Is it today? Okay, yeah. So... So 30 years ago, you guys set eyes on each other, and now 30 years later, you are, you are proclaiming your love for one another. This is, a, this is an amazing story, and it's the beginning of a very different part of your story, and that's your marriage. Starting today, it will be up to you whether that marriage will be filled with strength or weakness. As I just shared, marriage was created by the Lord, and it's through the Holy Spirit that marriage functions in its strongest form. The Holy Spirit's function has always been to create life, to, to, to take things and make them more. The Bible says the Holy Spirit hovered over the darkness and brought life into creation. 
It says that the Holy Spirit breathed life into the nostrils of man, and it says the Holy Spirit joined man and woman together in marriage. That's what today is really about. It's about life, because true love always brings life to one another. Romans 12, 9 through 12 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. These are the things that bring strength or life into your marriage. And so your individual promise today is to do whatever it takes to bring life to your partner, to share with him or her, to sacrifice for him or her, to serve him or her. This is what a strong marriage is built upon, a love that brings life. Now, Dave and Danielle, you guys wrote your own wedding vows to one another. And so, you <laughs> do you wanna take a break? Is it, are we doing all right? Just make sure. You're gonna hear from those. You're gonna hear from those. And Dave, you're gonna start. Uh, you're gonna start. I know. Maybe I should start. I'm, do you do you want to start? start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless there's another wedding ceremony you're going to after this. <laughs> I'll just turn. Go ahead. Um, Danielle, I have to say, our story is a little crazy. It's a lot crazy. And I still, I still cannot believe that I'm standing here with you today. God, God, I'm sorry. conversation with God and his Alexis about you. I wanted to know if they could just let me know how you're doing, what you're doing. And then a couple weeks later, I come walking around the corner and there you were. I was completely, I completely froze. I couldn't say a word. That was about three years ago. Um, God has given me a second chance with the girl of my dreams. And I'm going to take it and enjoy every second of that time that we have left together. I just want to tell you that I will just love you, cherish, and be by your side. <laughs> you are spinning a little, little out of control. I cannot wait to see what's ahead for us. I just want to say, I want to steal this line from the great baseball legend, Lou Gehrig. He said he was the luckiest man alive. I have to disagree and say I am the luckiest man alive. I love you more. Okay. Dave, I am so thankful that God is a God of second chances and that he decided to give me a second chance with you. I know without a doubt he brought you back into my life for us to spend the rest of our lives together. When I look in your eyes, I know you are my forever and my always. As we grow in our life together, I promise to be loyal, faithful, and hold your hand through the good times and through the bad times. I promise to show you for the rest of my life how much I love you and to always look in the rearview mirror before putting it in reverse. <laughs> um, you bring out the best in me, and I know that I am my best when I am with you. 30 years later, and you're still the best man I know. I love that your arms are strong enough to hold me when I'm falling apart. And that you always know what to say to reassure me that everything will be okay as long as we face it together. You make me feel safe and secure. Life is so much sweeter with you in it. I cannot wait to be your wife. And I look forward to all our happy endings. As we promise to spend the rest of our lives together, I know it will not be enough time with you. 
Dave, today I give you my hand and my heart, and from this day forward, you will never walk alone. That's pretty good overall, I thought. I thought you, I thought that was good. You did really well, so. <laughs> no, and make me read the letter to her? That'd be awkward for everybody. <laughs> kind of rub your back while I read the letter to you. I thought about it, but at this time, Dave and Danielle will assemble uh, something called the Unity Heart. It's a beautiful sculpture they will display in their home to remind them that as of today, their two hearts will become one. In Genesis chapter one, we read that God created man in his own image. That means he created man bold and strong to be a leader, to be a protector of his wife and family. And so Dave, come over here and grab the piece of your Unity Heart this is the outer form of the Unity Heart representation. It represents strength and leadership and protection of the man. The book of Ephesians reminds us husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, totally and completely giving himself for her. Now, what we'd like to do is uh, take the piece of the, Dave and I haven't actually seen this, so we're, we're trusting that you know how to put it together. <laughs> I asked him in the back, I said, how do you do this Unity Heart? He goes, I don't know, we'll wing it. I'm too emotional. So will you grab the other piece of the Unity Heart, Danielle? Okay. As well as in Genesis, it tells us that the woman was taken from man. The bride's piece of the Unity Heart represents the beauty and many capabilities of the woman, designed with intricate, beautiful detail and is placed inside the protection of the groom's heart completing the sculpture and representing their two hearts becoming one. Now to complete this sculpture, we represent the couple's three-part covenant. And so we are placing this one peg in the center of the two hearts. The peg represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit showing God's place in this covenant and the security and completeness that only our Heavenly Father can give. How good is that? We rock that thing. Scriptures tell us that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Matthew 19, 5 says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. May I have the rings? Now, culturally, we use rings uh, in our Western culture for really three primary reasons. The first thing we do uh, that we see with rings is that they're made of something precious. So they are costly. They, are, they, are, uh, they, they took work to get. Your marriage today is, is costly. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be work. As, as much as it's all beautiful and romantic and all those things, I think, I think those of us who, who uh, have, and you guys who have, uh, who have, devoted so much time to this relationship know that to make it what you want it to be it's going to have to continue to be work and it's going to continue to be costly they're also circular they're never ending this uh if 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 all goes as as we are laying before god that it should go um is is the last person you will you will kiss the last person you will lay down next to this is this is how you will spend the rest of your life is with this person standing across from me right now, and that's a pretty beautiful thing. And the ring, because it's never ending and circular, reminds us of that. Lastly, the ring is an outward symbol of an inward commitment. It's like baptism. There's nothing magical about baptism. It's a symbol to everyone else that we belong to God. This ring is a symbol to everyone else that we belong to someone else, and that our lives are covenanted through the Holy Spirit with another person. And so, Danielle, place this ring on Dave's finger. Dave, answer this question. With this ring, do you take Danielle to be your lawfully wedded wife, your constant friend, your faithful partner, and your love from this day forward? In the presence of God, your family, and friends, do you offer your solemn vow to her to be her faithful partner in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, in joy as well as in sorrow? Do you promise to love her unconditionally, to honor her and respect her, to laugh with her and cry with her, and to cherish her for as long as you both shall live. Take that ring, place it on Danielle's finger, and Daniel answer this question. With this ring, do you take Dave to be your lawfully wedded husband? Your con 
Okay. Yeah. I do, I do. Just want me to skip the rest of it? You're good. Are you good? Uh, cherish him for as long as you both shall live. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Almost. Now by the power invested in me by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the state of Oregon, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. So honored to be the first to present to you all Mr. and Mrs. Dave and Danielle Schnell. Dave and Danielle would like to thank you all for coming to their wedding. Uh, we're so glad to have you guys. God bless.